So let's start about talking mechanical injuries. Now, classically mechanical injuries are divided into two kind of basic formats. One is injuries caused by blunt forces or blunt weapons, and second is injuries caused by sharp or pointed weapons. Okay. Now, the injuries which are caused by blunt forces or blunt force impacts are. abrasions lacerations and contusions whereas injuries caused by sharp objects are incised wound and injuries which are caused by pointed weapons or pointed objects are Stabs. Okay. Now, in this division or demarcation, you must remember that when we are talking about sharp weapons, we are basically talking about sharp cutting edge. Okay. So, weapon has to have a sharp edge which can cut, which will produce an incised wound. And when we talk about stab wounds, we are talking about pointed ends. You see, this is a pointed end. So, we can stab this thing into somebody. It does not matter. Whether beyond the pointed end the edge is sharp or not, okay. But depending upon whether the edge is sharp or not, the two-dimensional appearance of the wound may change. Let's see this. If I draw three weapons here, you can see. that all these weapons have a pointed end okay all the weapons have a pointed end so they all can stab let's see if we stab through weapon number 1 which has a pointed end and has a single sharp cutting edge which is basically a kitchen kind of a knife and the other edge is blunt how the wound will look like the wound will two dimensionally look like an inverted triangle or a bell shape one angle being acute which is being cut by a sharp cutting edge the other angle being obtuse which has been cut by a blunt kind of an edge of a weapon with weapon number 2 pointed double edged weapon like a dagger the wound two dimensionally would look like a spindle shape both the ends or angles acute because they have been incised or cut by a sharp cutting edge whereas with weapon number 3 a pointed broken iron rod the opening will look like a round to oval zigzag kind of a lesion with irregular margins so what do we see common in wound number 1 and wound number 2 that the margins are regularly cut also they are regular see the margins are regular whereas in wound number 3 the margins are irregular so if we have a wound in which the margins are regularly cut we call those kind of wounds as incised wounds and because the margins are regularly cut in wound number 1 and 2 and plus they have been stabbed because the weapons had a pointed end these two kind of wounds are called as incised stab wounds okay whereas this kind of a wound with irregular margin and a stab is called as a lacerated stab wound because irregular margins are primarily features of lacerations right so this is how we demarcate or distinguish various kind of stab wounds that could be produced by various kind of weapons let's see what all weapons can produce a lacerated stab wounds a broken iron rod with an pointed tip as we have talked upon in this example then a screw driver then an ice picker and what kind of weapons are these these are pointed and blunt weapons they do not have a sharp cutting edge okay so pointed blunt weapons are going to produce lacerated stab wounds now if you look typically at this blunt angle of this angle of wound number 1 and if you were to magnify this it looks like this okay if we were to complete the picture we are talking about this area okay we talking about this area 
which now looks like tail of a fish. If you can see, this looks like tail of a fish. And this thing in a lesion is called as fish tailing of a lesion. This is called as fish tailing. Okay. So what do we learn here? We say that fish tailing is a feature of a stab wound which is produced by a pointed single edged weapon. A pointed double edged weapon like a dagger would not produce a fish tailing. Okay? And mind you this is fish tailing, this is not plain and simple tailing. So let's see what is plain and simple tailing which is often called as tailing of a lesion. Consider a razor or consider a scalpel which is producing a incised wound. Okay? Now, to take this example further, let's consider a surgeon who is performing laparotomy. What does he do? He places the scalpel on the abdomen and he makes the force and he cuts the abdomen. As he goes downwards, the force is greater to start with and when he is almost ending the incision, he is lifting off the scalpel, so force is reducing. So the wound which is thus produced is an incised wound which is deeper to start with and shallow to end with. This is called as tailing of a lesion. Okay? What tailing of a lesion is basically a feature of an incised wound, not a stab wound. Okay? Generally, it is a feature of an incised wound. And what does it tell us? It conveys us the information, the direction in which the force has been applied. Because the tail will be at the rear end. Fine? Now, let us concentrate on the blunt kind of injuries. Okay? Abrasions, lacerations, contusions. What are abrasions? Abrasions are basically superficial epithelial injuries which are formed due to the blunt force impact onto the body. Okay? There are four kinds of abrasion. Scratch abrasion, grazed abrasion, pressure abrasion and impact abrasion also called as imprint abrasion. Scratches are produced by fine pointed objects like a tip of a needle or a pencil something like that. The medical legal importance of scratches, it can tell us about the direction in which the force has been applied because in scratches the epithelium starts to roll off and it will be collected at the rear end or the tail of the scratch. Okay? Second is graze abrasion. Now graze abrasion are most common medical legal entities encountered on daily basis. Why? Because graze abrasions are produced when the body you know, uh, comes in friction with the tangential friction with something which is a rough surface. Okay? So they produce tangential friction lines onto the bodies which are produces grazes. And these kind of injuries are very common in road traffic accidents. And road traffic accidents are plenty on day to day basis. That is why I said that graze abrasion is the most common medical legal entity encountered on daily basis. When we talk about graze abrasion, it is important that we talk about two important nomenclatures. The first is something which is called as Grebel rash. Okay? It is called as Gravel rash, also called as brush burn. So, gravel rash or brush burn. This is nothing but when the body slides tangentially on some kind of a gravel material, gravel material, small pebbles or stones. They friction because of the friction or the tangential friction onto the body, a rash produced onto the body which is basically a grazed abrasion. Okay? That is called as gravel rash or brush burn. Second important Nomenclature which we are talking about is called as a friction burn. Okay? This is friction burn. This is not brush burn. This is friction burn. Now, what is friction burn? To produce a friction burn, you need to do something. Okay? Take a scale, put a cloth onto your forearm, and rub the scale vigorously, the rough surface of the scale vigorously onto the cloth. When you will lift the cloth off, what you will see, because of the you know, handkerchief or a cloth which was in between the skin and the rough surface of the scale, you does, do not typically develop the kind of abrasion which would have developed if the cloth was not in between. Okay? So it looks like a reddened, excoriated kind of an area. That is called as a friction burst. Okay? Again, a kind of abrasion only. And what is the medical legal importance of this kind of friction burn? Again, in cases of road traffic accidents, sometimes typical uh, abrasions do not develop onto the body because of the impact of road, you know, uh, 
rough kind of surface or rough kind of projections of tar onto the body because the clothings are in between. Those are friction burns.